Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, what is an affine map um, or translations? So let's just jump right into it. So the first observation I would like to stress is the following. So we are interested in kind of something affine and affine means there is no origin or you don't really know what the origin is or whatever, but you're still interested in linear operations and not kind of crazy whatever operations. So the kind of the easiest operation that comes to mind is you have some, some whatever geometric object like a square and it lives let's say in 2D and you just move it, you just move it a little bit, you translate it somewhere. Um, this is of course not an, so it goes, goes to here, right? This is of course not a um, uh, a linear operation because you have moved, you have moved the the origin. The origin linear operations preserve the origin. So zero. So in some sense, this looks bad if you want to come up with some matrix calculus because matrices are linear operations. So they are they preserve zero, right? Matrix times zero is always zero. But something funny happens. So if you think of, well, this whole picture times, let's say an, an interval, right? So some time interval, then you get one dimension higher, you are in nine dimension three, and you still have kind of the same objects. Um, you just have now the square times an interval, it's this piece here, and the whole, translation operation, so this one here, that you can see here on top now, is actually a shearing operation. So you kind of shear um, this, this, this blue um, cube into the green cube. So it's a shearing operation. And that's a linear operation. That's kind of a fun observation. So translations in 2D actually are shearing um, in 3D. Aha, uh -huh. that's fun. So you did something FI, which is not related a priori to anything linear, but it actually is linear in one dimension higher. So that's a funny ob observation. So let's, let's do another example. So some kind of general FI map will take some object like my um, my, my blue rectangle here. And it might do some crazy linear operations to it, like it, it, it moves this point to here. So it's a rotation. Obviously, I shrunk it. So this is this shrunk. And also, it is translated. So kind of a lot of operations at once. And this is clearly not a linear map, because again, you have moved the origin. But you have the same operation. So this rotate, shrink, translate operation is actually a rotate, shrink operation in 3D and, and shear, right? It's a rotate, shrink operation in some sense. Mm. So here is my, my, uh, my, my green um, rectangle and here's the black one. And it's again the same picture. So you shear to the side and it's just certainly a linear operation. So an affine operation in 2D is a linear operation in 3D, which is, which is really a fun observation in the whole starting point and the whole difference or the whole connection between affine and linear. Very easily summarized. So whenever you have an affine operation, you can actually um, assigned to it a matrix. You just need one dimension more. You just need one more row and one more column. And this is how it works. So you have some, some linear type operation that you put, let's say in the uh, upper left box. And this is the operation you see here. So in this case, you take this rectangle here at the top and it's translated. So the translating operation is a red operation that you put here. So it's translated in this case, oh, a half and a half 
in the uppermost plane, and this is roughly this direction of the, of the, of the red arrow. So this is this translation. But you have also done something to the to the triangle. You've rotated it a little bit. You've shrinked it a little bit. You've sheared it a little bit. Whatever. You have the matrix M, which kind of encodes this uh, this linear part of the operation, and you have this vector B, which encodes um, the translation, the affine part of the operation. But still, it's it's a, a totally legit linear operation, just one dimension higher. And the way it works, as I said, is you have this matrix M that you put in the upper left. You have the matrix, uh, the vector B, the translation vector that you put in the upper right. And you add an extra row, which is exactly this extra dimension you add. And it's it's always this way. Um, yeah, so just look one dimension higher. That's exactly what you should do. So affine matrices are basically matrices in, in one dimension more. So in this case, my affine space would be of dimension two, but still I would have a, a matrix of dimension three of a rank of, of size three. And that's exactly the formal definition you would do. So remember an affine space is a pair of a set and a vector space. And here's another affine space and the map between them is then also a pair, namely of, 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 a, of a set map and of a linear map, such that something holds, but basically everything is built in, in order to in, incorporate uh, that, that those maps are those pairs in one-to-one -one correspondence to exactly those matrices um, with M here, the linear part, with a B here, the affine part, and with some additional row the, the size of this thing, of course, depends on the size of M and B. But that's it. That's that's a linear map, uh, an FI map. And the whole point why these were constructed and what makes this interesting is that FI preserves a certain 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 operations, uh, certain natural properties of of objects and uh, of linear objects or whatever. So let's say we are here in R two. And I hope by now you, you will agree that this here is, a, is, a, is an affine operation. And what you should see is that it preserves lines. So this line goes to here and this line goes to here. So both lines are preserved, but they, they might be a little bit rotated. They might be a little bit scaled, but basically they're still lines. Right? And what is also preserved is that they're uh, still parallel to one another. They started out to be parallel and they end out up to be parallel. Same for this one here and this one, they end up here. Still lines, they're still parallel. Still for the uh, yellow one here and here, they're still lines and they're still parallel. So affine transformations are kind of built to preserve lines and parallel uh, parallelism. And that's basically what, what, what makes them uh, so, so important. So they are kind of all the natural operations you can perform in some linear way, not caring about the origin on objects. And that's why they appear in, in uh, many actually applied setups. Like you, if you want to do computer graphics, basically what you need to do uh, is to have some affine operation because you might want to translate things around. Linear is not quite enough. But as we have seen, this is not a huge difference. If you know linear, you need a little bit more. You need one more row with, a, with, a, um, with an additional vector, and then you get affine. So understanding linear and affine go hand in hand. And one of them uh, kind of, if you understand one of them, you ought to understand the other. Um, but that's what I wanted to talk about for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time.